Well, everybody, this is John Bornstein. I'm the senior pastor of Calvary Fellowship Fountain Valley right here in Colorado Springs, and I want to thank you for tuning in to our new Refocus video series. Today, we are talking about putting on the mind of Christ, having a Christ-like attitude. So if you have your scripture handy, please turn with me to Philippians chapter 2, verses 2 to 5, where we read, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus." powerful words to remind us of living in a sacrificial nature, a selfless lifestyle, an attitude of service. This is difficult for all of us because it's real easy to get caught up in our creature comforts. It's real easy to get caught up in elevating self, maybe doing a little bit of the work that God has called us to do from time to time to feel better about ourselves, as opposed to a lifestyle a lifestyle of worship, a lifestyle of praise, a, an attitude of service, and, and having a prayer life that models what we preach, that we live it, we breathe it, we serve like it. This is the attitude of a soldier for Christ, an ambassador for Christ, one who knows that their citizenship is in heaven, according to Philippians chapter 3. Again, in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, challenges us that whoever wants to be his disciple must take up their cross and follow him. And then in verse 62, he says that if we grab hold of this plowshare, we cannot look back. Those who look back are unfit for the kingdom of God. Powerful words. He then challenges us in Luke chapter 14, verses 25 to 35, that we must examine the cost of discipleship. Are we willing to give it all up? Are we willing to give up our own agenda for his agenda, for service to him? In Matthew 19, 29, he tells us that we must be willing to leave it all for him. Now, this is an attitude check. It doesn't necessarily mean that he wants to take away everything you have, completely rock your world by stripping you of everything that you own and know and love. No, he, he, he tests the heart. He knows the hearts of men. Is it really about him or is it about us? And we sprinkle a little of him in our lifestyle. Psalm 116.15 tells us, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of a saint. Why? Because these were individuals who understood that it was not about them. It was all about Jesus Christ. It was all about serving God the Father. He knows what's holding you back. He knows that worries and fears and doubts, those anxieties of trying to control your circumstances, being unwilling to live an audacious lifestyle of faith, he knows that these things are holding you back, that we're often worried about all sorts of things. And so in Luke chapter 12, he addresses these issues about worry and fear. When you have an opportunity, please go back and reread Luke chapter 12. In Revelation 3.16, he challenges us that because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Ouch. Those are hard words to read. And often we find ourselves in a complacent posture of mediocrity before Almighty God because we're not really inspired or challenged or passionate about the things of God. Rather, we're just trying to survive day to day. Or maybe we have some aspirations of the flesh rather than the aspirations for the kingdom. You know, Francis Chan used a great illustration in his book, Crazy Love, in which he was uh, really excited about those marine commercials, the few, the proud, the marines. One thing he didn't like, though, before he went to the recruiter, he didn't like the idea of doing all those push-ups and all the running that he saw on those commercials. So he briefly thought about it. Maybe they can give me some kind of customized plan where I don't have to do so many push-ups or do all that running. That looks exhausting after all from the commercial. And then he finally just came to his senses and said, you know, <laughs> when you're a Marine, you're a Marine through and through. They don't give you a customized plan. 
And yet we as Christians often come to the table for Jesus Christ thinking, I need a customized plan. Lord, I can give you one day a week, maybe an hour here or there, as opposed to a lifestyle of worship to the King of Kings. You know, Christ knows what's holding you back. And he often addressed this with individuals who came to him and wanted to follow him. In fact, he told his son to leave his family and follow him in Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Uh, excuse me, Matthew 8, 21 to 22. He also told a, a scribe who wanted to follow him that, that the Son of Man doesn't even have a pillow to lay his head upon in Matthew 8, 18 to 20. So he, he knew these issues that were going to be holding these individuals back. We all know the one especially of the rich man whom he told to sell all he had and give it to the poor in Matthew 19, 16 to 30. Again, he knew that these things were holding them back. They, they weren't fully ready to commit to the things of Christ. They weren't ready to give it all up. They weren't ready to serve like that. You know, in 1 Kings 19, 21, we read of the story of when Elisha was called by Almighty God to follow Elijah. And in that moment, he had to make a decision. There was not going to be a plan B. It was only plan A. And so when Elijah came and laid the mantle on his shoulders, he had to make a decision. So he chose to burn his plows, sacrifice the cattle. That's basically like burning down the business on the way out, that it's all or nothing. I am wholly in this for my Lord, for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And indeed, Elisha modeled that. There was no turning back. In Matthew 19, 29 to 30, we read, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. Now, Christ wasn't saying, go leave your family, uh, don't divorce your wife or something like that. We often mistranslate that text uh, for those who don't understand the full context. Uh, rather, what he was challenging them is that we often have our own agenda. And he's saying, you need to have put on the mind of Christ. You have to be willing to give it all for me. This is difficult for all of us, even those who have been following the Lord faithfully for a long time. We haven't been fully ready to give it all for the King of Kings. And we see something modeled in Acts chapter 4 that's absolutely beautiful, of people that are wholly devoted to prayer. And because they have the mind of Christ, they're willing to even give the very clothes on their back, the resources that God gave them. They didn't need a 10% tithe rule because everything they had belonged to the Lord anyway. Where is that attitude in us? Have we really sacrificed it all? Are we willing to give up everything? Our homes, our cars, our finances, it's all borrowed stuff anyway. We are working toward a kingdom that will never fade away. The things of this earth are temporary. So we must put on the mind of Christ to focus on the things that are eternal. It's not an easy assignment. You need to give it to prayer and you need to stay in the word. And we got to challenge one another as the body of Christ, holding each other accountable to the greater message, the greater mission that is before us. I hope you've been encouraged. I know it's tough. It's convicting. But God bless you. We're just getting started. Talk to you soon.